All right, in today's video, we will be creating a authenticated to non-authenticated SOX 5 proxy. I guess really the other way around. It will be a proxy on localhost that does not require authentication, which connects to a remote proxy which requires authentication. Um, to do that, we're going to be writing a Rust script, but as a test, we're going to have a Python script just to show what we're intending to do. I will write the Python script really quick first. We're going to import requests. We're going to make a proxy um, dictionary for localhost port 6969, because why not? Um, and then we are going to send a request to IP who is, print an error if we get one. Um, we're going to, make, to just send that request. It's going to be a get request. We're going to check if the status code is 200, and we're going to print the text if it is. Otherwise, we're going to print the response value of the status code, blah, blah, blah. So if we run this, it won't work because we don't have a proxy running. Yep. Um, but once we write this proxy and run the Rust script, it should work. So we're just going to close that for now. So to start with, we're going to import from STDIO, read, write the copy function, which copies data from one TCP stream to the other, um, result, and the STDIO error. So then we're also going to import from STD net, uh, TCP listener, TCP stream, and we're going to import the thread. Then we're going to declare two constants, uh, our SOX version, we're using SOX version 5, and our authentication version, we're using authentication version 1, which as far as I know is the only one in existence. We're going to make a main function, which is going to start by declaring a server socket, which is a TCP listener bound to port 6969. We're going to unwrap that. And then for stream in server socket dot incoming, incoming is a function that will basically return the stream for each time someone tries to connect. We're going to match that stream. If it's OK, we are going to call the client function with that stream. And we're going to print an error if the client function returns an error. And then if there was an error with that stream when it was incoming, we will print that error. Then we're going to make a client function, which is going to accept the TCP stream and return a result. Uh, then we're going to read the greeting header, which is a buffer, two bytes long. And we're going to read that from the stream. The first byte will be the version. And the next byte will be the number of authentication methods, number of methods. And then for each authentication method, we're going to have to save it. So we're going to create a vector of methods, which is just a U8. It's not a vector of methods, a vector called methods. It's a vector of U8s. Uh, for number of methods, we're going to read one U8 from the stream, which is that method. And once we've read that to the buffer, we're going to push it to our methods vector. Then we're going to check if, it, if one of the methods the client would like to use is no authentication. If not, we're going to return an error. And this message here, and that message effectively just means that we didn't accept any authentication version. Um, if not, though, we're going to send our SOX version and zero, and authentication method zero is just no, no authentication required. Then we're going to create a remote stream to the remote server. So this is effectively to the proxy that requires authentication. We're going to do that using the remote function, which we haven't written yet. And then we're going to clone these two streams. Now, the reason for that is the copy function um, only works one way. So we're going to need to create uh, two threads, one copying from the remote to the local, and one from the local to the remote. So to do that, we're going to make a thread. That thread is going to run a function, which copies from the local stream to the remote stream. And we're going to return again. Um, then this here will copy from the remote to the local. And then we're going to join each, ignoring any errors. Because if there's an error occurs there, it's on the part of the two proxies, or the proxy and the client, not us. And then we're going to return OK. So then our remote function is going to go to the remote proxy and give it the username and password. And it's going to return that stream here so we can get them to talk to each other. They both think they're talking to us, but really they're talking to each other. 
So the remote stream will return a result with the TCP stream. To do that, we're going to first create a remote stream, which is going to connect to the IP address of a proxy and the port. And if it's okay, we'll just assign that to remote stream. If not, we're going to raise an error, fail to connect to remote proxy. Then we're going to write a greeting header, which as you noticed, is what this is receiving here. How it receives the version and number of methods, and then each of those methods. That's effectively what we're writing here. So the stocks version, version five, of course, number of methods, one, and that method is username and password authentication. Next, we're going to receive the service reply, which is the same as up here, um, where we sent the SOX version and accepted the accepted authentication method. So we're going to read that to a buffer. And then if it's not the correct SOX version, we're going to raise an error. Um, or if they didn't choose the authentication method for username and password, we're also going to raise an error. Um, then we're going to create a negotiation request. So the last, so the client didn't have to do this because we chose um, no authentication. But here we're going to have to send a message with our username and password. To do that, we're going to create a variable for our username and a variable for our password. They're both answers. Um, then we are going to create a vector for the actual request. The reason for this is I don't know how to, when declaring a vector, extend it in the declaration. So I thought this would be easier than seeing if you could do that. I'm not even sure you could do that. So we'll see. Um, then we are going to push our username length and then our, extend it by our username as bytes. So that will work perfectly. Um, it'll read the length and then it will read the length of the username and then it will read that long and use that as the username. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing with the password and we're going to send that to the remote stream. Next, we're going to receive the negotiation reply slash welcome message. Hopefully it'll be a welcome message if all goes well. Um, so we're going to read that buffer and then we're going to see if the authentication version is not one, which is the only authentication version available right now, as far as I know. Um, then we're going to check the username and password authentication status. If that's not zero, which means good, it all worked. We're also going to return an error, but otherwise that means we've successfully authenticated with the remote proxy. And it is, it thinks it's talking, it thinks it's talking to us, but we're really going to return that stream and then copy all data from our client to that stream. So even though we're technically it's client, it's talking to our client and it works out perfectly. So effectively, whenever you send something to this proxy, it'll actually be run by that other proxy. Now to test that, we can run this little script here that we wrote earlier, and it should, oh wait, we have to run it there. Kind of a dumb cargo run. Now, if we... we can run. Fuck me. Python. That's not too wide. Now it should work. A couple tries later, yes. Um, we're not, I do not live in Europe, so that means our proxy is working. And you can see that the remote proxy that we connected to has the same IP address as this, so everything's working. Great, that is how you make a authenticated to non-authenticated proxy. And this is really useful for like, yeah, Firefox. And that's actually the only use I can think of for it. Yet Firefox does allow you to connect to an authenticated SOX via proxy, but it's kind of cool to be able to do. Anyway, that's it for the video. Hope you have a good time. Enjoy. Sure.